Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Siddhartha Jayanti, and I'm going to be presenting to you about the multiplayer Colno Blotto game. It's a paper co authored by Enrique Bashotzera and Ben Edelman, who's going to be giving the second half of the presentation. And we're all PhD students at MIT and Harvard. Emile Borel introduced the Colno Blotto game in 1921 in a foundational paper on game theory that in fact defined pure and mixed strategies. <laughs> and over the past century, the game has found numerous applications in the social sciences as a model of competition with limited resources across simultaneous winner take all fronts. In our work, for the first time, we defined the multiplayer version of Borel's game and we solve for equilibria and derive efficient algorithms to sample from the mixed Nash equilibria. Well, what is the game? Two army commanders, Alice and Blotto, are fighting across several battlefields. Each commander has a budget of troops available at his disposal, and each battlefield has a value. The game is played as follows. The commanders simultaneously allocate their troops across the battlefields. And the value of each battlefield is won by the commander that sends more troops to that battlefield. For instance, Blotto wins the first two battlefields in this case, while Alice wins the third one. And if both players send the same number of troops to a given battlefield, its value is split evenly by the commanders. The goal of each commander is to maximize his utility, the total value he wins. We say that the game is symmetric if all players have the same budget. And we say that it's homogeneous if all battlefields have the same value. Sometimes there's a restriction on the allocations. If the budget can only be split into non-negative integers, like individual soldiers being split amongst battlefields, we call the game discrete. If the budget can be split into arbitrary non-negative real numbers, we say the game is continuous. And finally, in this paper, we introduce a novel Boolean case, which models applications where each battlefield is either contended for or not contended for by a given commander. So the allocations are zero, one. The main focus of our paper and this presentation is on symmetric continuous blotto. And because all the budgets are the same and they can be continuously split, we normalize all the budgets to one in our presentation. Geometrically, we can think of players allocations, uh, a player allocation, which is a vector of dimension n with sum of coordinates equal to one as a point on the simplex. For pictorial convenience, we will illustrate the case of three items. And so here we see the uh, the triangular simplex. And in this case, the entire action space is the triangular simplex that we see. And a pure strategy of Alice is a point on the simplex. Similarly, a pure strategy of Blotto is a point on the simplex. And mixed strategies of Alice and Blotto are distributions over the simplex. We can illustrate these by drawing a density map over the triangular domain. Much of the technically difficult work done on the Blotto game thus far has gone into computing equilibria of the game. Since the introduction of the game by Borel in 1921, a slew of papers have gone into analyzing the equilibria of the game in more and more difficult cases. Starting with the homogeneous symmetric game on three battlefields, uh, going through Kovanak and Robertson's partial solution to non-homogeneous asymmetric blotto over arbitrarily many battlefields. Surprisingly, about a century after the game's introduction, the two-player blotto problem still hasn't fully been solved. There have, of course, been several other papers on discrete allocations, variations of the game, and several papers on interesting applications of the game in the social sciences. In particular, some notable applications are the following. Perhaps the most notable is two-party elections. For instance, the US presidential election. Here, the two players uh, spend their campaign resources in the hopes of winning the votes in the N electoral districts, the 50 states in the case of the US election. In another application, two R&D firms allocate their budgets across researching N potential drugs. 
since the first firm to discover the drug receives a patent and gets all the revenue from this discovery, this is a blotto game. Similarly, blotto can be used to model local monopolies, advertising, and even species competing over ecological niches. In a 1993 paper, Meyerson alluded to the fact that generalizing to multiple players would allow the modeling of K-party elections, such as the parliamentary elections in India, the UK, and Germany. In fact, a multiplayer version of the game would also model uh, all of these other applications for multiple players. In our paper, we formally introduced the multiplayer colon blotto game. In this game, there are K players, and each player allocates his troops between the battlefields, and each battlefield is won by the player who has allocated a plurality of troops to that field. Once again, ties are broken by splitting the value amongst the players who tied for the maximum allocation at a given battlefield. And our work derives mixed Nash equilibria for several cases of the symmetric multiplayer game. In particular, we focus on developing efficient algorithms for sampling the randomized equilibrium strategies of players. The highlight of our work is our result for three-player Blotto. We derive equilibria for the symmetric case of this game, even when the battlefield values are not homogeneous. In fact, we give a linear time algorithm for sampling a Nash equilibrium strategy for each given player, as long as no single battlefield is worth more than one third of the total value. What if there are more players? Excitingly, we're able to extend part of our derivations to arbitrarily large K. In particular, if the values of the battlefields can be partitioned into K sets, where each set has battlefields summing to the same value, then we give a linear time algorithm for sampling a strategy in equilibrium. Finally, we consider multi uh, multiplayer Boolean blotto, and we mathematically solve for equilibria. However, some of the quantities are NP hard to compute, so we give a fully polynomial time approximation scheme for playing an epsilon approximate equilibrium. In the rest of the talk, will focus mainly on the three-player result. In order to understand it, I will first show you the two-player equilibrium from the literature and some key takeaways from that solution. So let's focus on the two-player game where both Alice and Blotto have a budget of one. And there are three battlefields, each with value one. And ask ourselves, what happens if Blotto, if Blotto plays deterministically? We see that if Blotto plays any strategy, let's say B1, B2, B3, then Alice can outplay him to win two out of three battlefields. How does she do this? For instance, she can play two epsilon less on the first battlefield and epsilon more on each of the other two battlefields so that she wins the second two. Since the game and the players are symmetric, Blotto can always expect to win at least half of the total value by mirroring Alice's strategy. So we see that there is no pure Nash equilibrium for this game. This reasoning extends to more complex settings of the game. So in general, we are seeking mixed Nash equilibria. Now consider the expected utility of Blotto when he and Alice are playing mixed strategies. His expected util utility is the expectation of the sum of the utilities he will get at each battlefield. But of course, by linearity of expectation, we can push the expectation through the sum. So that was simple enough, but the point is, importantly, this means that while Blotto's strategy is a joint distribution over the simplex, his expected utility only depends on the marginal distributions he plays at each battlefield. This realization is a key ingredient to solving the problem. Now let me present an equilibrium of the two-player game to you. Consider what happens if Blotto plays uniformly between zero and two-thirds on every battlefield. In fact, uh, now it's clear uh, that Alice should also play in the range zero to two thirds, as there's no benefit of outplaying Blotto uh, by too much. And in fact, regardless of what pure strategy she plays in this range, she'll win half the utility and expectation. Thus, we see that each player playing uniform in zero to two thirds on each battlefield is an equilibrium. In fact, the same reasoning extends to n battlefields. 
And if the battlefields have different values, it suffices to ensure that the heights of the uniform distributions are proportional to the values of the battlefields. So are we done solving the two-player homogeneous symmetric case? Well, not quite. While the utility calculation only depends on the marginal distributions, we still don't know whether there exists a joint distribution that simultaneously satisfies the budget constraint and has the marginals that we calculated. Proving the existence of such a joint distribution is trivial when n equals two, uh, but it's surprisingly uh, complex even when we have n three and greater. So my friend and co-author Ben will now take over to explain these couplings and how we further the insights therein to take on the three-player and k-player k Blotto games. Great, okay. So we now know our challenge is to find a coupling of our marginal distributions that we've already calculated that are just uniform marginals. So again, we're gonna go back to our pictures of the simplex here, and we're just going to really look focus on the triangle um, as if it were in two dimensions in the right. Okay, so our goal is to make it so that we, when we project our distribution on the simplex to each of the axes, it projects to this zero to two thirds range uniformly. So here's one way to do it, uh, which was in a paper by Gross and Wagner, which solved this two player uh, symmetric homogeneous case. It's to use a hexagon with diminishing density towards the center. Um, it's actually, I would I encourage you to think about how you might try to couple these uniform distributions. It's, it's quite non-trivial, surprisingly. Um, so that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is to put a bunch of these hexagons around in a nice pattern. This happens to work. We can even recurse and we can get fractal distributions that work. Another way to do it was only discovered or published by Weinstein in 2005 somehow, even though it is very simple. Um, I'm now going to describe a third type of coupling uh, that will, for which the intuition will be useful for explaining our three-player solution. Um, so with this, I'll start with a question, which is if we pick a point uniformly uh, from the surface of a sphere and we project it directly to the north-south axis, to the poles, what will the distribution of its vertical coordinate be? Will it be bulging, will it be more likely to be distributed towards the ends, towards the poles, more likely to be distributed towards the center, or will it be uniform throughout? Now, perhaps surprisingly, and this is a very fun fact about the sphere, uh, the marginal distribution is perfectly uniform. And this really is going to work out very nicely for us. It doesn't, it's not true for hyperspheres of other dimensions. And this property is going to be crucial for both the two-player case and more than two-player case that we use. So here's what we do. At least this is what Gross and Wagner did in the two-player case. You pick a point uniformly from the surface of the sphere, and then you project it down onto the simplex. So we're imagining the sphere is coming off the screen towards you. Now, once we do that, we can see that because the marginals are uniform along every direction, it'll in particular be uniform along the directions we want. And so this will satisfy our coupling. Okay, great. Now let's think about the three-player case. In the three-player situation, what are the marginals we want? Well, suppose Alice is facing two other players named Blotto and Spidey. All Alice cares about for each battlefield is the maximum play of Blotto and Spidey. That's the only information that's relevant to her, given that they have specific strategies. Now, if Blotto and Spidey both play a certain CDF, the same CDF, F sub i, on the battlefield i, then the CDF of their maximum will be the square of this CDF. It's a simple property. So therefore, if they each play a distribution proportional to x to the 1 half, which is a beta distribution, then their maximum will be uniform and will, by the same logic as in the two-player case, find that these marginals form a symmetric Nash equilibrium. Now, the issue here is that these, this, these marginals are no longer so simple as uniform distributions. It was slightly tricky to couple the uniform distributions before, and now we have to deal with coupling these more complicated distributions. Um, as you mentioned, Roger Meyerson had considered this problem before in a paper in 1993. Um, he ended up simpling the problem by, by accepting the fact that the marginals would only 
uh, but that sort of the constraint would only be satisfied in expectation as opposed to almost surely. And this allowed him to get results about the three player setting. What we're able to do is actually couple these distributions and surpass Meyerson's result. So here's the intuition of how we do it. So let's consider first a three battlefield case. We have three battlefields and three players. Each player is going to draw a point uniformly from the surface of the sphere. Then they're going to just square each coordinate of the point they drew. And that's it, that will be their strategy, along with some scalings. So this is going to satisfy our marginals. It's easy to check that the CDF is correct. And it'll satisfy the budget constraint because the L2 norm of the sphere is by definition constant. But now the question is, what if we have more than three battlefields? And this is where it becomes a little more tricky and this is where the heart of our paper is. So when we have more than three battlefields, again, we're gonna draw a point uniformly from the surface of the two sphere. But now this two sphere is gonna be only taking up the first three coordinates of our n battlefield co n coordinates that we have to deal with. So I'll represent this here by a circle that's only taking up two dimensions of this three dimensional space. So in order to make it so that our circle is going, or really our sphere is going to take up all the dimensions, what we do is we're going to rotate the sphere within the n dimensions with a linear isometry. We need the cross sections of the sphere to be exactly perfect. So finding the correct isometry is the key algorithmic challenge in our work, and it ends up being non-trivial. We find a greedy algorithm that takes linear time and is able to solve this problem. So that's our, that's our coupling. This is perhaps the main theoretical contribution of our work. And that gives us our main theorem. We are able to find equilibrium for almost all situations in the three-player symmetric plateau. Once more, we also are able to get somewhat of a handle on the k-player situation, where we use the lk minus one sphere instead of the l2 sphere. But the issue is that the lk minus one sphere is no longer rotationally symmetric, so we aren't able to handle as many cases. Finally, as we mentioned before, we uh, give some results about our Boolean Blotto uh, game, which we encourage you to look at our paper to find out about. So in conclusion, we have introduced this very natural multiplayer generalization of a classic game, and we solve for equilibria in the symmetric free player case. We leave open questions of the asymmetric case, the discrete case, and general solution for more than three players. And also we think it's an interesting question to understand budget constrained couplings uh, in general. Um, with that, uh, our talk uh, is complete and uh, thank you very much.